Greetings and salutations, YouTubers and malfactors. We're back here at Stop Logic Motorsports, and uh, well, we're going to be dealing with the impromptu shop. As uh, everybody often, I guess, opines on my previously dirty garage, and I no longer really have that, that house is in the process of being packed up and sold. So we're going to be doing some moderate mechanic work in here. Uh, up in the DFW area. So this is kind of a premise for the scope of work for this first video. First video is, and I know the house is a little bit of a mess because, well, we just moved in. We're switching to a no toil uh, air filter and high flow cage. And we're gonna get all of that installed, greased, gabagool, all that mess. Well, it's gonna be phase one of uh, I guess our slight performance mods to the bike. Part two, in video two, we're going to take out our uh, flapper and do basically kind of a uh, truncated flapper mod. Instead of pulling the whole thing, we're going to just pull the uh, flapper, uh, tape down this bit, and plug the hose. And also secure this down so we end up with a uh, wide open air box at all times instead of uh, at certain RPM ranges the bike actually opens and closes this flapper valve and it uh, restricts air to the bike resulting in a little loss of uh, throttle performance so we're going to kind of sort that out after we're done with that video 3 is going to basically summarize or we'll put this together in two putting on an EJK tuner. Now, a few of you folks will be like, well, why do you need a tuner? You're not putting on actual exhaust and not doing anything nifty. Well, we're opening up the airbox a little bit, leaning out the bike. We're, I'm basically richening it up just to get a bit more longevity and a bit better throttle response on it. So we're going to set this up per the open airbox and stock exhaust settings on the EJK site, or you can find it SI, uh, SR Moto, I believe. I forget which. So that's going to be kind of our uh, initial foray into interior interior housework on the bike. With all of that done, I might turn my attention to uh, doing a LED test on the uh, headlight. I've discovered that there's a uh, little bit of a clearance issue with fog lights on this bike, and especially the ones I've got. So we're going to sort that out at a later date. I know I did the how to put them together mod, but, or video, but, you know, it is what it is. And last ride, I damaged the clutch safety switch. So we're going to do a supplemental video on how to bypass the safety switch in a waterproof fashion. So hopefully you guys enjoy what we've got going on here shortly. And um, hopefully somebody out there finds it helpful. If not, you know, feel free to give me harsh criticisms or anything. I also take payment in attaboys. And understand also I'm working with a very limited amount of tools. Most of my stuff isn't here, so I'm working with kind of a, a couple of just knock around car sets of uh, spare tools. So. Things are going to be a little dicier than usual. At any rate, we'll dig into part one, which will be air filter and tacky red grease and all of that stuff. We're going to get tacky. Well, enjoy. And we're back. So we're going to get down to brass tacks on part one. Now, uh, might ask, well, why are you replacing the stock air filter? That's not a bad air filter. Actually, comparatively speaking to your other Japanese dual sports, it's a pretty good filter, but it's extra dense and it has a very restrictive backfire screen. So we're gonna get a little more airflow through this bike. Eh, I'm not really wanting for horsepower. I just want a slightly snappier throttle. I kind of want to see what all the buzz is about. But I'm not willing to drop, uh, you know, seven bones on a full exhaust kit. 
So here's our air filter, our air filter box. And uh, oh, which side do we pull down from on this one? Ah, there's a little tab in there that you flip that opens up. And presto changeo, you remove the old air filter. So we have this highly uh, restrictive backfire screen and a very thick filter, which apparently has been fairly well loved. The other thing I wasn't wild about with the stock filter is it didn't fit on the uh, screen the best. So basically we're just gonna open up the next box. Mm, what a mess. Or as they say, south of here, I que sucio, which is basically, what a mess, in Spanish. Alrighty. And the other reason I went with no toilet and the fact that it's relatively cost conscientious, these filters are about 20 bucks a piece, and really you could almost dispose of them every few thousand miles. Though I plan to get two that I can alternate with. That no toil filter. The filter cage. Johnny Cage. And you wonder why I've got the extra tacky uh, stuff here. Well, truth be told, thanks to some COVID tomfoolery, I actually have trouble sourcing grease. Of all things, sourcing grease. Never figured you'd have trouble getting grease. Yeah, basically that's just tight fit around there. Okay. Alright, we gotta pause for a second. Apparently our shower was having a fit. Every, this place is definitely a work in progress. There we go. I got a little button here. Alright, now you wonder why I've got the tacky stuff. Well, when you're popping a filter in, you want to make sure you grease the edge so you don't get bypass of dirt and other schmutz into your bike. And I know I normally use a, just a regular old axle grease for this, but eh, red grease isn't bad. This is the stuff you want to use in your uh, dog bones, axles, all of your grease points, all of your pivot points. So when you pull the bike apart and want to start greasing stuff or you want to drill and grease zerks, this is the good stuff. I'm not saying the Regular grease isn't great, but this red tacky stuff is a little bit better waterproof, or a little more waterproof. It just performs a little better. You don't have to like slather the holy Jesus out of the stuff, just a little, little gasket on here. When I was younger, my dad taught me how to do this. I used to completely coat this with a huge bead of grease, just make a mess everywhere. Never had a seized uh, engine when I was doing my own filters. Well, not at least not from dirt intrusion. I did have a seized uh, bike one time riding California Desert on the KLX 250, 1995 KLX 250. Apparently the uh, heat and running the bike WFO in the desert the whole time seized up the engine. Anyhow. Stuff this nasty feller in here. And turn ya. It doesn't matter, you get a little grease on the outside of it. This isn't a beauty contest. Alright, make sure that's all nice and centered down. Make sure the new cage is on there. Make sure we don't have any. bits bitty around the outside and then boom you just changed your filter on your WR250R 
a nice little high flow filter. Everything should be good to go. And you notice the snorkel here, and that's why I'm saying you don't have to drill a bunch of holes in this thing. It just makes it noisy and it makes it less reliable. Taping down that deal, you're gonna have tons of air volume coming in here. So, this is the end of phase one of the video. I'm not gonna show you guys all the stuff of putting on the plastics and taking the plastics off the seat and all that because if you don't know how to do that, you probably shouldn't be doing this stuff. But we'll be back in our next video. Yeah, a thought just occurred to me. Someone's invariably gonna ask, how often are you supposed to do these filters? So the, I believe the manual says every 8,000 miles or every visual inspection. If you have a nasty race out in the woods, sandy track, go ahead and do it. Just, it's cheap insurance. When it starts to get a little caked on the outside, swap it out with your spare one, clean it with filter cleaner, and then use your uh, recommended oil. On these no-toil filters, use the no-toil oil, because it's biodegradable. And doesn't stink up the house. My advice is keep two filters, one that you can swap out. Just readily have them ready to swap out. There's nothing like a little peace of mind, and it's a super cheap service. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get back after it. So if you like the content, like and subscribe. If you don't, feel free to criticize me harshly. Whip me, beat me, and make me write hot checks. But we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>